Hi guys, today I'm gonna show you why fixing kick and bass issue is one of the most important tasks in mixing. Then I'm gonna show you two the most traditional techniques to fix this problem and I'm gonna show you why it may suck and why AZ independence concept may be the best technique to fix kick and bass. I just remind you guys that videos on this YouTube channel is just light entertaining addition to one of the most serious audio production courses. And the cool thing is, you can attend one free trial class, which is the real class with my students. This course has even unique homework checking sessions. I open your real projects in real time, I compare your mixes to the best sounding songs of all time. I check your settings, I change them, I explain every move, I explain what to listen to, how to make decisions. It's 9 month course in Skype, with convenient monthly payments. By the way, I donate the whole income from this YouTube channel to help cats and dogs and wildlife. And I hope from time to time you donate as well. To get a free trial class, send me an email, information is on the screen. But please check the first pinned comment or the end of the description of this video, where I keep the most updated email address, and also there is a link to near 200 reviews of my students and to my professional career path. But the best way is to get a free trial class, send me an email. I'm gonna show you the song I wrote exactly for this topic, and I'm gonna show you disadvantages of those techniques, and eventually I'm gonna show you the best technique. Let me quickly explain why it's so important to resolve kick and bass and what's the real problem with that. How bass note looks like. In the beginning, usually you have some mid-frequency fluctuations, which is shorter waveform. It's a snap on a synthesizer, it's a plectrum noise on a bass guitar. And then you have long waveform, which is low frequency. And bass notes usually sustainy. It doesn't go down in volume that that quickly. Kick drum kind of similar, it has like some snap. It's also like shorter waveform, like more mid-range. Uh, over here, and then it starts to have the tail. Its tail usually gradually going down in volume relatively quickly, you know, like fading out, fading out, right? And bass note, let's say, can be a bit longer if we kind of zoom in our picture. This is low frequency of the bass, like sine wave, which is like very long. Potentially, you may have similar looking sine wave on a kick. So when you sum up these two sounds together, kick and bass, the one which is quieter will be masked by the other one which is louder. So that's why sometimes when you listen to the kick in solo, it sounds just like fat and warm with a lot of bottom end. But when you listen to the same kick in the mix, you just hear only the snap and like lows, like you don't hear it really, because lows of the bass may dominate over lows of the kick. Sometimes, actually, they not so good in phase. You're gonna have just a bit shifted phase, maybe like this, which means you start to get some frequency cancellation partially happening. So one waveform going up, some waveform going down, and they fight each other, kill each other. So this is why sometimes the, these low frequencies even will be compromised. Also it's a matter of consistency. Potentially your kick sound can be very different. At the moment where it's together with the bass it sounds in one way, when it's uh, like alone in between bass notes it sounds in a different way. Now I'm gonna show you the song which I wrote exactly for this demonstration. We have two parts in this song. AZ independence, 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 AZ independence. Pretty sensitive, I almost cried when I sang it. <laughs> So the lyrics for the first part was AZ independence, second part of AZ independence unique technique created to save bass and kick. Check it out. AZ independence unique technique created to save bass and kick. AZ independence unique technique created to save bass and kick. AZ independence unique technique created to save bass and kick. <laughs> so in this case, what you're gonna do, every time when kick punches, the whole bass sound goes down in volume. Two sounds, so bass on the top, kick on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply a compressor on the bass, 20, 15 years old compressor kind of. I'm gonna apply 4 to 1 ratio, I'm gonna apply medium release, 100 milliseconds, 0 0.5 milliseconds for some smoothing in effect, but anyway it's considered almost like instant attack. Why? I'm gonna explain in a sec. So what you see over here, I activate this button, which is kind of like you put blindfold on the compressor, and the compressor really doesn't know what it's processing. And you can say to the compressor something like, hey compressor, you actually processing the kick. 
So how I do it, I activate this button and I use send from the kick to this particular compressor like this. I activate it. Compressor believes it's processing the kick sound while its work will be applied to the bass sound. So it's like six decibels suppression every time when kick punches. Basically, you have a threshold. You put this threshold down like this. Now we have instant attack, which means if peaks much higher than the threshold, they will be suppressed a lot. So this part will be compressed, let's say, a lot. This part will be compressed a lot because peak is tall. Also supposed to be compressed. This part supposed to be compressed, like, a lot. This peak, as you can see, it's a bit, like, quieter. So maybe, like, 4 dB of suppression will be applied to this peak. Not as tall, which means less compression, less volume suppression. Just a bit less. This peak just a bit above the threshold, which means you're gonna have, like, medium compression and even peaks actually below the threshold still can be compressed depending on what soft knee you have and depending on how long your release is but we use side chaining which means this process will be applied to the other instrument which is on the top which means at this moment as you can see this particular peak supposed to be compressed a lot which means the snap of a bass will be compressed a lot so this part actually will be compressed a lot this peak on, on the kick, triggers bass compression. So on the bass it will be compressed by a lot of suppression here. Next peak also, so over here you're gonna compress a lot. Then you're gonna compress a lot over here for this peak, obviously, also like 6 dB of compression. Let's say it's related to this more part, kind of. So this part will be compressed a lot as well. However, this particular peak, uh, and this particular peak, actually they don't trigger that much compression. So compression starts to be a bit relaxed at that moment so you're gonna apply like 3 db of suppression so a bit less volume loss on a bass in this case so this peak will be compressed just a bit less than previous ones and then let's say those last two peaks on the kick on this picture triggers just a bit of compression maybe like 1 db or whatever so that last peak of the bass which is more related to this region will be suppressed just a bit let's say by like 1 dB only, like this. When you blend two sounds right now, kick and bass, you like overlap them as you can see like this. Basically it's the middle and the end of a kick. Kick will be much louder than the bass, because bass is suppressed but kick is not. So bass will not harm your low frequencies of the kick. This technique, however, has one serious flaw. Over here in the beginning of a bass, you have articulation of the bass. In solo it sounds nice, especially if your bass like percussive and fast, it sounds like ten 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 In the mix it sounds commonly like this, like So you don't have this like perfect articulation, that perfect snap, you compromise this little area in the beginning. Imagine, at the moment where there is no kick, bass may play some notes, right? In this case it will be like ten ten. but when kick punches and another bass note sound at the same time with the kick. Bass will sound like wah, wah. some bass notes will sound like tan tan and then like wah, wah, and tan tan and wah, wah. sometimes it still may be fine, you know what I mean? Use longer attack on a compressor. It's still not easy independence technique. This is the way how you can improve this traditional technique just a bit. It still will have flaws. I'm gonna explain in a sec. You just put attack around like 10, 20, 30 milliseconds. Let's say this is 20 milliseconds attack, period of time. Let's say from here to here, forget about sidechain right now. Just let's say compressor on the kick 20 milliseconds first peak will be untouched next peak which is in the middle of 20 milliseconds region will be compressed a bit and then in the end of 20 milliseconds range let's say this third part of a transient of a kick will be compressed by let's say 4 db or almost 6 db already and only after attack period of time you're gonna achieve finally 6 decibels that amount which you're trying to get so only this part will be like compressed much more and so on and so on right we're gonna have sidechain compression as you can see it will be similar for the for the base over here you can see this like shorter waveform this is exactly what we call transient of the kick and this is the transient of the base see those like micro fluctuations in the very beginning i can even measure how much 10 15 20 milliseconds for this transient during 20 milliseconds attack you will not apply that much suppression which means you're not gonna kill this transient of the base that much this part of a base will be suppressed by 6 db uh, and this transient in the beginning of a kick will be still not as much suppressed articulation like 10 10 10 10 10, 10, 10 let's say 20 milliseconds or so put threshold a bit lower but you know what even this situation has flaws
two serious disadvantages. Don't forget that 20 milliseconds doesn't really mean that compression is not applied at all. Remember how I showed you like this peak goes down in volume almost nothing, this one goes down in volume a bit more and this one goes down in volume relatively noticeably. The very first element, yes it will be preserved, we're gonna keep it as it is. The problem is in the middle of this uh, snap of the base actually you're gonna have already some amount of compression. In the end of this region you also gonna have a lot of suppression over here. Eventually your transient, that nice and very like defined, really noticeable transient of the base will be anyway compromised. You know, sometimes it's already not enough. You can say let's prolong attack maybe. The problem is you start to get serious influence only over here then with a longer attack. On the bass guitar or on the bass synthesizer, green region should be suppressed because kick has a lot of energy in this green area. The second disadvantage of this traditional technique is inability to get perfect equal power exchange. Imagine for a second, let's say our bass and kick don't have transients. This part is just low frequencies mostly, and this part mostly low frequencies with some harmonics to it. If this first peak is loud over here, it triggers compression, which makes this part of a bass just like very quiet. This part, not as loud, but still loud enough, we're gonna have a lot of compression for this part of the bass. It will be also compressed a lot. This part doesn't trigger too much compression, which means this part on the bass will be compressed maybe not as much, but still medium amount of suppression. And then these last peaks of the kick trigger just a bit of compression, maybe due to soft knee or longer release. It will be compressed just a bit over here on the bass. So what it allows you to do, it allows you to get perfect equal power exchange. What it means really, it means low frequencies gradually going down with this pace on the kick and low frequencies on the bass gradually going up with exactly the same pace. The problem with transients, transients do something wrong with this process. Transients trigger compression. Higher frequency fluctuations on the kick, they trigger the most of compression. They define how much to suppress, and release time is not the shortest in the world. Release time still will influence next peaks. After these peaks are gone, release time will be influencing the next peaks. If these little three peaks triggered a lot of compression, next peaks supposed to be compressed even more because of previous peaks were compressed a lot. Eventually with sidechain, this part will be compressed not due to you examined perfectly the low end of the kick in this green area, but because of actually this green area, which is the transient of this kick drum, actually does something to this suppression. So compressor will not know exactly how to implement equal power exchange. The transient is too influential in this process. You're gonna have just some volume drop because of some transient engaged this compression. In the same way you just can go to the DAW and instead of applying any compressor you can just apply volume curve, you can put some points over here and after the transient you just can drop volume like this, right? It will not be perfect, there is no equal power exchange and unfortunately in this traditional approach you also don't have this equal power exchange. It will be working to some extent, but you know it's just like big plus quality. If we spend extra time, let's make sure you get the best. Plus notice, when I examined the transient of the kick, this is what this transient look like. As you can see, it doesn't even have low frequencies. So this mid frequencies information will trigger compression, which is supposed to define how much lows should be compressed. I just want the kick tail to trigger sidechain compression. And the last disadvantage of triggering from the transient, imagine what if your drummer plays just like harder, softer, harder, softer. Every kick which has like taller transient simply gonna trigger more compression and bass note will be just quieter. You also can say, how about multi-band sidechaining, let's say just low end of a kick triggers low end compression for the bass, right? Or so-called dynamic equalizer, which will be just examining lows and applying this equalization just to low frequencies of the bass. Yes, it will give more space for low frequencies. This part still has not only low frequencies. Some harmonics, like second harmonic, third harmonic, those frequencies around like 200 hertz, 300 hertz. Imagine your kick has 500 hertz overtone and your bass has 500 hertz overtone. So they will be fighting around like harmonics. So that's why actually I want the whole effect for the whole bass, not just for just exclusively for low frequencies. So basically what I'm saying, I want all these little peaks on this bass to go down in volume during 
kick sound to get the maximum clarity of the kick. The second problem with this second technique, first initial snap of the kick doesn't mean it doesn't have any lows at all. Sometimes it has some information and it may trigger some amount of compression, but we want to avoid any triggering from the transient. That's why AZ independence concept will be the best from the best choice over here to get the best separation and equal power exchange possibility. Uh, I already have a video on my YouTube channel about AZ independence concept. It's not really one technique. I already showed five examples in that video how you can use it in terms of equalization, how you can use it in terms of compression, uh, how you can apply it for saturation. In a second, I'm gonna show you what to do if you don't have edited kick in the project. Don't worry, don't panic. I'm gonna show you how to get those things done very quickly. Just give me some time. So first step, copy your kick. Now we have a copy of the kick. Is the channel number three in this mixer. Let's not send this kick anywhere. Over here in the mixer there is routing settings. Now it goes to stereo out. Stereo out it's a master bus where the whole instruments come together to be one song. I just select no bus over here. Which means if I play right now as you can see third channel has some information on it but you don't even hear it. On this silent channel we're gonna delete the transient of the kick because we don't want the transient of the kick to trigger compression. I'm gonna select all these samples over here. As long as they all selected my movement will be applied to all those samples. Now I take this piece and I just edit it to this position. If I like I can even make it smoother like you know like little tiny fade in for it like this. So appearance of this tail will be very smooth with no digital artifacts. All these things applied actually for all these kicks as you can see. See? Second kick. Now I choose this and I send this silent kick to be a trigger. On the compressor itself we don't need attack anymore because we want instant compression when something in the tail of a kick appears. The whole transient of the bass stays a bit earlier than the tail of a kick. Moved track number three to position number two. And as you can see over here, within this range, there is nothing to trigger compression for the transient of the bass. And only since this moment where my time cursor is, check it out over here, only at that particular moment, you're gonna have compression start. And this is how you suppress only the tail of a bass and you don't touch the transient of a bass. Even a bit. You're gonna have the best articulation of the bass you can get. Right now, apply any transient shaper on your bass synthesizer or bass guitar. You can raise the transient. It will not be influenced by any compression at all. Now you say, okay, how about if I have, let's say, four minutes song and I have all these kicks, just like one file, what we're gonna do? So this third channel right now, as you can see, just have one waveform. Now I go to audio editor, there is tab called hit points, you activate it, you set up threshold to have those kicks marked properly. As you can see every kick right now has this vertical line, create events, bam, that's it. So what you're gonna do now, as you can see in the project window, you can see them separated. You just select them all, you just touch them like this and you just move it not to have any transient like this. This is what happens to absolutely every kick in your project, check it out. This is the second kick. Strong kick, very defined bass, like ting, ting, ting. Using a Z independence concept, you will understand that release also can be fixed. Tin, ti, ti, din, ti, din, ti, din, ti, din, like many different short notes. This green curve still will be on the way to the surface, producing maybe 2 dB of suppression or 1 dB of suppression, while the next transient of the bass happens. In this case, you're actually gonna suppress the next transient of the bass for sure. You can of course shorten release, but you know what, sometimes it doesn't work. You're gonna copy the bass channel. On one of channels, you're gonna have just transient. On the second channel, you're gonna have just sustain. You apply this compression, sidechain compression, just on the sustain channel, on the second channel. Separate transients of the bass, which never touched by any compressor. It's just always very pronounced and t t t t on every bass note. Absolutely cool. It's first channel here. Second channel is just like uh, 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 lows of your bass. And it will be compressed by the trigger track uh, 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 of the kick will make uh, 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 of the bass quieter. So previous method 
still as the independence concept, but a bit simpler. Maybe you don't have too fast nose of the bass. In this case, it will be working perfectly. It's the only way how you can get like really equal power exchange between kick and the bass without any spoiling effect for articulation of your bass. But again, guys, what I can teach you in this short video. Plus, my policy is to put just 10% of the whole power of the course to my videos. If you want serious education, check this course out. Start with the free trial class. This course is all about bringing real results. For the same amount of money, you can buy like one microphone, three, four plugins, but those things don't guarantee any results. My course guarantees results. How to contact me information is on the screen, but please check the first pinned comment and the end of the description of this video, where I'm gonna keep the most updated contact information plus links to near 200 reviews of my students and information of my career path. But the best way is to get a free trial class. Send me an email. Hey, the